In this video today, we're going to answer a question from a viewer, which is how can I stop calling tops and bottoms? Stick around for this one. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me and I hope you are subscribed to the channel as well. If you're not, please consider doing so. Hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell button if you want to be notified when a video we upload to the channel is live. Ding, you can see it, you can go, is that something I want to look at? Yes, no, yes, no. Oh, very interested, bang, and you can watch it. Right, so this one is from Hank Lee. Appreciate your question. Thank you very much for taking the time to write a question. It is appreciated. Okay, so a uh, question was, any advice on how to stop calling tops and bottoms and fake outs? I think I am keep trying to be contrarian. I keep looking for reasons to counter trend trade. I've only making a little money by scalping little moves, but never made money on the trends. I keep thinking this time will be different and the bull flag will break downward this time. For years, I see a trend breakout starting, but I don't join the trend because many initial breakouts look like a fake out after long consolidation. I also see a long lasting bull trend and don't hop on the trend because I think it's overextended and look for short opportunities. Right, thanks Hank for that question, it's appreciated. Okay, this is really super common, super, super common. Okay, and as traders, generally speaking, we want to be contrarian. And this is why I've kind of put on these two things here. We either want to, you're either gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna stop doing it and I'm gonna become a trend trader or I'm gonna harness it. Now, there's no right or wrong way. And unfortunately, we tend to think this is wrong, this is bad, this is bad, because what we do is we see, as Hank has put there, he sees trends. He's like, there's trends, there's trends, there's trends, I'm missing out on the trends. But it doesn't necessarily mean you can't do very, very well by trying to catch those tops and bottoms. Paul Tudor Jones has said quite clearly, now, of course, it's changed, it's changed dramatically, but at one point in time, he was never very good at trading trends. He was always very, very good at trading the turning point. He was very good at capturing that turning point. And that was his bread and butter. We know how successful he was as a trader, is as a trader. Other traders have said, no, I don't try and catch shops at bottoms. I just catch the meat in the middle. That's the easy bit. Let's get it straight. There's no easy way of doing it. So if you're doing this, you've got to decide what to do. And I'm going to be, this is, this is kind of advice that most people won't do, but it actually worked really, really well for me. Is if you look at this side of the coin, and you go, you know what, I've got, a, I've got a, a thing about catching these moves. How can I harness it and be better at it? So rather than try to scrub it out and going on to stop it, I'm gonna become a trend trader. How can you harness it? And it sounds like, if you look at that question, which is the same with all, a lot of traders as well, is that all it's going to take is to be very careful about which ones you are fading. So fading moves is a very, very profitable strategy. If, and there's a big if here, you're trading under the right conditions. If you're fading a trend, of course you're gonna get run over. But if you look at the majority of charts, the majority of charts are doing this, right? They're faking out, eventually they're trending, but you've got one, two, three, four, five kind of fake out opportunities before it eventually goes. So everyone trading the breakout, the trend guy, if they've got a, a tight stops, getting stops, 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 stops. The fake out guy is managing to capture this. Is it as efficient as perhaps catching a trend? No, it's not. But if that's your thing and that's what uh, you've kind of naturally been drawn to, then capitalize on it, leverage on it, harness on it, harness on your ability to do that. Now, in, in Hank's question, he was saying, you know, I'm able to scout these things. If that's the way and you're capturing those, then that's a that's a that's an actual really good quality to utilize. If you can capture these things and scalp a bit of an opportunity, but be aware that you're scalping counter trend and be say like, well, actually, I'm I'm going to take half off here, but I'm going to look for maybe a move back up to the high. I think that's a fake. So you take some off, you take some more off, you scalp out of the position, and you say, well, actually, if it goes through the lows, I'm gonna get stopped out. You just trade always counter trend, but you're very strict about it. But then the big thing is you don't get concerned and worried about the fact that this massive trend has happened. And if you see a market that's trending, as was mentioned in that comment, and you regret it, don't trade that market, look at something else. Because it's also, you know, a common thing with traders, and it's, myself included, used to have this. We'd look at something and go, oh man, it's moved so much. Why not just buy it and hold the thing? Shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, we're, it's, even the trend guys would be looking at it saying, I wish I'd got on it. And, you know, you're saying another thing is, oh, I feel like it's gone overextended. I'm always looking for a fade. This is about, this becomes a slightly different thing of, 
you know, making sure you have a specific pattern to fade. So you're not looking to fade this because there's no reason to yet. And as tempting as it is, because you think it's overextended, and it may well be, there will be a good counter trend trade in there at some point, but this is where you have to be very, very strict with your setups. You're either looking for exhaustion, something we talk about trying to find exhaustion, you look for a, a topping pattern, you look for some kind of thing that enables you to get short on that to take a counter trend trade. Now, you're not expecting it to completely reverse, but there's a lot of meat in that. There's a lot of opportunity in trading that way. So the point is, you're ignoring the market when it is in the trending zone, but when it's coming to a, a, setup, and, a, a, a setup and strategy that fits the criteria of a reversal, then it's into your central point. Then you're looking at it on your screens and you're trying to find the opportunity to fade it. So that means that it's less stressful because you're not constantly thinking, oh, I wish I got that trend. You suddenly become a counter trend trader. So you don't care how long it goes. In fact, you want this thing to go as far as possible because the further it goes, the more likely the counter trend move back is gonna be more aggressive, the more juice for your account. So you completely reframe the way you're looking at it. Rather than looking at trend as regret, you say, okay, well, I'm a counter trend trader. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just not the right environment for me or that market. Let me look at something else. Let me find something that's in a range. Look for those spikes, those fake outs, those wicks, those kind of those uh, bull traps, bear traps. That's your bread and butter. That's how you trade it. And focus on that and get good at that and get good at knowing when to take profits. Get good at knowing when to run them when you're really, really right. Get good at when to cut the, cut the losses, all that kind of stuff. And then bring these into your ecosphere or your uh, awareness, if you like, when they come to a point that they could set up with one of your strategies. And that just be become such a nicer way to trade. So that's one thing, and that's the harness side of it. The other side of it is to stop doing it, in which case you scrap all of this and you say, well, I'm just gonna try and capture trends, in which case you've gotta start from scratch almost, you've gotta change your strategy, you've gotta change your thinking. I'm not a big fan of that, you know? I think that if you are inclined to do this, then don't try to be the trend guy just stick with that and become the best counter trend trader you can become. There's enough meat in everything to, to do well. You don't have to be like, you know, these guys who say, oh yeah, I've been on this trend for years and years and years. Yeah, but they would have been stopped out thousands of times before they got on that trend. There's always pros and cons with each thing, guys. And so, you know, I'm a big believer of if that's the way you've gone, then harness it, harness it, adjust it, tweak it, work on it, work on it, work on it, get better at it, get better at finding those counter trend moves, get better at analyzing, get better at this. And if you want to add a, a, a small stake trend trade in there to try to diversify, then maybe do that. You know, look for a very specific setup. Maybe the first pullback one, pullback that dip under. It's got a little bit of a counter trend trade element to it because you're trading against the uh, shorter term trade, but you're trading with the longer term trade and that can help you get on. You know, the pullback, the dive, you know, you're trading this aspect from a counter trend because you're buying here, but you're sticking with the broader long term trend. So you can do things like that. So anyway, gone on and off about this video, guys. But the point is, I would suggest harnessing your skill set and working on becoming better at that and not worrying about the fact that you're missing big trends. Get them off your radar, get them out of your screen, focus on another instrument, another currency pair, or whatever, whatever market you're trading, I don't think you mentioned. But doing that, I think, is better at making progress than getting completely regretful and trying to rewrite everything and going to be a trend trader. No harm in doing an occasional setup with it, or maybe doing a blend of the two like that one there, but stick to what you're good at, get better at it. All right, take care, bye-bye.